Yesterday was Wednesday. That means today is Thursday. Thankful Thursday. It is the month of June. It is Thursday, June 4 or 4th. And remember the year is 2020. It is a cold winter day. No, it is a warm spring day today. It is getting towards the next season, which will be summer. That's coming in 16 days. Have a really cool thing to look at today, a book about backyard insects. That's the title or the name of the book. And it is a, by Millicent Slesum. And the photographs or the pictures are by Ronald Goo. Look at that insect. That is a ladybug. Remember, they have the spots on it. Then on the back, look at that. That looks like a snake, but it's not. It's actually a caterpillar. This book will tell us about things that we can find in our very own backyard. The backyard just means the area that's grassy or woodsy behind your house or apartment. Definitely need a grown-up to go out there. And you got to be really careful of poison ivy, too, this time of year. So here is a picture of somebody's backyard. There are more than a thousand different kinds of insects in your own backyard. They live in the grass, they live in the flowers, and they live in the soil, on bushes and trees, and under rocks. Hungry birds and frogs and lizards and spiders are always searching for insects to eat. But insects have a way of escaping. And this book is going to show us some cool pictures about insects and ways that they can get away from something that wants to eat them. This insect is a moth. You can barely see it, but it's right there, shaped like a Tommy Triangle. And it blends into the tree. So if you look at it from far away like a bird, you would not even see it there because it blends right in. Pretty neat, huh? It's called camouflage. There's other ones. You see the one there? I'll get closer. There it is. It looks like part of a branch. So if a little critter was walking by, it couldn't see that. It would just think it was a branch. And then the one down here... It looks like a leaf, but it's not. If you look up closely, you can see that it's another kind of moth. It's kind of like they're in a Halloween costume all the time to blend in. How about this one? This one looks like a green stick. And then this one looks like a brown stick. Pretty neat, huh? And then if you look at this... It just looks like an innocent little leaf, but if you get closer, you see that it's not a leaf. It's a butterfly. Remember, we learned that butterflies rest with their wings closed. It's not a moth because the moth would have its wings open. And then this guy is, looks like a grasshopper, but it's called a katydid, and it looks just like a leaf on the grass or on the ground. Pretty neat. Then we know caterpillars, they're going to turn into butterflies later, but that guy looks like he's just a piece of grass. Imagine that, just walking along. You wouldn't even notice that. Maybe we've walked by these thousands of times on our way to get the van to and from school. This one's really neat. Which one is the insect and which one is the stick? This one is the insect, and that one is the stick. How do I know? Because the book told me so. Otherwise, I would have no idea. They just look so much alike. Then there's other things that insects do so that creatures won't want to eat them. Look at that. That is a spittle bug. What does it do? It spits foamy bubbles so nobody will come near it. I wouldn't want to touch that. How about you? And there it is again, blowing its bubbles of spit so 
a bird would fly along and go, I'm not eating that. That can't taste good. So some insects hide. Some do disgusting things like blow spit. And then we have these guys. These are, we know, bumblebees. And what will they do? They might sting. They have colors that are bright. The yellow and the is very bright. And the yellow and the black tells an animal or a toad or a bird not to eat them because they will sting. That also tells us, that tells me and you, don't touch it. It will sting us and that will really, really, really hurt. And then there's a caterpillar that's yellow and black. And if you were to eat that, if you were a bird, it would be poison. It would taste terrible and it would make you very, very sick. Pretty neat, huh? So here are some more pictures. Look at that. A bird could easily see that on the flower and think, mm, I'm going to have that for a snack. But what would happen? It would get stung. It tried to bite that. So definitely not something you want to do. So a fun thing to do would be to find some of these bugs or insects in your very own backyard, but don't touch them. So let's see what we learned today. I'm going to write a word, and it's going to rhyme with thing. That word is going to be sting. Some bugs and some insects sting, and that can really hurt. Sting. It's kind of like a bite, so I will write that as well. So that's why it's always good to just look with our eyes and not touch. So we have bugs that sting or bite, and that's very dangerous. Okay, let's see if we can make some cool rhyming words. I have our fun thing right here. And the first word, b ug we have a B, B, the U going A, uh, and the G going G. Now I want to make another word out of that. I want to make the word that says dug. I dug a hole and I found a bug. Which one would make the D sound like dug? That one, you're right. So bug just became D, UG, dug. I'm thinking of something I don't want to do. I don't want to give a bumblebee a hug. No, not this one. That's j. If I put that there, I have another word. Hug. Hug. You can give yourself a hug. Let's put j there. J, j, j. And now look what we have. J, ug, jug. I would like to make the word rug. Ruh, ruh. That's the first sound. Ruh, ug, rug. Remember what sound this makes? Mmm, like at the beginning of that insect called a moth. And this would be mmm, ug, mug. All right, we'll just do a couple more. I'm thinking of the one that says t, 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 like Tuesday. That's this one. And that word would be t, ug, tug. When you tug, you pull, 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 pull. And then the last one I'm thinking of, this is that quiet sound. And this is p -ug pug. You might be wondering what a pug is. It's a little dog. My sister loves pugs. Pugs. I would have to put an S on the end because she wants to get like three of them. So that would be pugs. Pugs. Okay. So we'll put those away. And let's see if you 
can take a little walk. Again, I know we did this a lot, but it's always good to take a nice little walk and just look. Use your eyes to just look, your ears to hear, and see what you can hear outside. Can you hear some birds? Can you see some birds? Can you hear some bumblebees? Can you see some worms? So just take a look outside and maybe you can find a couple of different signs of insects or bugs and things that remind us that it is the season of spring. So let's all try to do, I was gonna say the number that matches my age, but my age is too big. How about the number that matches your age? So that would be a five or a six or a seven. So we'll just take a nice walk outside, try to find five or six or seven things that remind us of spring. Remember to listen and to look, but don't touch. Don't smell, don't taste. Okay, have fun. I can't wait to see what I find. I hope it's a butterfly.